So I was in CFT2. Uh, it was quite a big uh, disparity in the differences between CFT1 and CFT2. Uh, for instance, we had a lot of specific uh, branch-specific lanes, such as um, we had the engineer lane, where we got to assemble basic explosives using C4 and like glucose packets. Uh, we had an ADA lane where we got to see a lot of the, anti the air defense artillery uh, weaponry. We had um, an aviation day where we got to ride in a Chinook helicopter. That was really amazing. And then we had, my personal favorite was uh, the armor lane day where we got to go in a tank simulator. And I was the gunner and I was shooting little virtual uh, tanks through the through the gunner spot and it was that was really amazing. That cemented why I kind of want to do armor uh, coming out of here. Yeah, so I was in a CFT-1. The main difference between CFT-1 and CFT-2 is that CFT-1 is a lot shorter and it's just like the bare minimum, for like just hitting the graduation requirements. Well, CFT-2 is a lot longer and it gives you like exposure to different branches and um, they have a slightly longer FTX than CFT-1, etc. And my favorite thing that I did in CFT-1 was probably the water confidence course. And for those of you who don't know what the water confidence course is, um, it's two parts. One part is basically a zip line where you zip line and jump off into the water. That was pretty fun. As well as walk across the balance beam and shimmy across, down the rope and then do a pull up and fall into the water. My top recommended items would definitely be uh, number one, probably like a waffle top and a waffle bottom because it gets like super cold during the night at the FTX. Um, another big thing probably not a lot of people will bring up is makeup wipes because um, you're going to be wearing like face paint most of the time. It's pretty aggravating to get off. It doesn't really work too well with like the, the camo off they sell at the sea store. So uh, definitely stock up on some of those because it'll make your day a lot better. Definitely like a pillow of some sort like uh, a regular pillow or like an inflatable one you can just get off of Amazon. Like I just tried repping my uh, camelback or my, my rucksack or just something to substitute the pillow and it was not the greatest thing so I would definitely recommend that. Um, you also do a water confidence course and so another thing that you would really need to bring is boots uh, because if you only have one pair of boots they're going to be soaked for like the next three days so and if you get rained on your boots are soaked so having an additional pair of boots is very beneficial. Uh, my recommendations are go to the gym Hit a rock, hit a run. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, go on a couple of runs because it's pretty out of Buckner. It's, you can see a lot of nice terrain and, you know, spend some time in the woods. Uh, definitely get to know your people, like your your peers. That's the number one thing that I did. Because you're never, you're never really going to see these people again. Like you might see them around campus every once in a while, but you're always going to say hi to them when you see them. So I would definitely say hang out with your people and get to know them. <laughs> it's actually a surprising amount of time of, uh, of downtime during CFT1. Like you'd get back from land nav because you start the course at like 4 a.m. You're done by noon back to Buckner. Um, there's a couple days like that. Most of your mornings will be front loaded in CFT1 or um, they'll just get done kind of early in the day. So you can go fishing, um, go hang out with your friends at Barth, um, go work out at the Beaver Fit if you're not too tired from, uh, from earlier in the day. So there's like, you could even go swimming in the lake, I guess, if you want to. So the FTX for CFT1 was technically, I think, two days. Um, there was one day where like they taught us how to do, like be a team leader for the different um, setups. So like break contact, react to contact, um, ambush, stuff like that. And then you uh, walk, basically march up to the training and you do a patrol base and you don't get much sleep during the FTX mainly because you're routinely like having to get waken up and pull security on the line. And uh, some funny stories that I have is like there's times where I'd be sitting there and like I think I hear something or whatever and I'm like, oh shoot, do I need to shoot at this? Because like sometimes the task force will come out and attack you and it's just to see if you're like ready and actually like doing your job. So for my FTX, being in a weapon squad, then I was in the squad with the heavy weapons in the platoon. So I was an M240 Bravo machine gunner. It's not a bit different of an experience as opposed to anybody in the other three squads. Just because our mission was different because we were providing support by fire for the rest of the platoon. So in one way it was a bit rougher per se than everybody else because I had instead of a seven pound M4 out of 30 pound machine gun. And it's a lot more focused in 
your team level aspects in the sense of everybody in your machine gun team is making sure that that gun is up and functional. You'll go up some tough hills. There's one hill like on the other side of Buckner that's like literally like this. So you'll go up that with like the 240 and stuff. And then like once you're up there actually patrolling, um, it's fun like doing tactical missions. Like once once I'm in the mission, like that's that's like the the fun part for me. You won't have a whole lot of long movements or anything. I mean maybe a a, a collector too. <laughs> cut this shit. But those movements are going to be under like a lot of weight because you're going to be carrying a bunch of uh, a bunch of 240 ammo. I mean, potentially even the 240, which is pretty heavy. Um, and you're also going to have some graded events. Like you're going to have your team leader assessment, um, which is basically we're going to have to react on the fly to some op four guys um, and just kind of make a split second decision, like based upon your knowledge of the situation, what you're supposed to do. One of my biggest pieces of advice is definitely to stay positive. Uh, I struggled with that, especially during the FTX. Uh, on the second night, we got rained on pretty heavily, and I was like, man, this sucks. But then all my squad mates were like, no, you know, it's not rain, it's just a strong breeze, you know, where it's just a little bit cold. It'll be all good. We can do this. We can get through this together. We can make it through. And that really inspired me. Go in with an open mind, because CFT is why you make it. If you go into it, thinking that it's going to be the best time of your life, you're going to have a lot of fun. If you go into it thinking it's going to be the worst time of your life, you just want to focus on the bad sides, which it's not necessarily bad, but it can be physically and mentally demanding with the long days, long nights, high tempo and all that. But go into it with an open mind. Be willing to learn, absorb what the cadre and your leadership are telling you. Ask the task force, like, different tips on things, because this is going to be the most, like, in-depth training that you're going to get for a while that's not like focused on you leading people because like CLDT is focused on you like leading a platoon and stuff like that while this is more focused on those individual soldier tasks like how to execute those how to do land nav just stuff like that and it's very important to like learn this because it's crucial uh, as a future officer. He's going into it with an open mind in regards to your cadre so what I saw was a lot of disrespect towards the cadre and a lot of impatience towards them. And you kind of have to take take their, like, put your trust in them that they're going to get you where you need to go and, and everything is going to be done correctly. Because a lot of times the cadre would, like, say something that we need to do and a lot of the cadets would, like, undermine the cadre. And it's like, I just didn't like that. Like, left a bad taste in my mouth. Like, you're a trainee still. Like, give them the respect that's due. Yes, like, sure, they were yucks, like, two weeks ago, but show the same respect that you do during the academic year. Just because you're not a plebe anymore doesn't mean you're not a soldier anymore. You're still a soldier. You're still wearing the mm. uniform. Like, act like it. Act like an adult.